In their never-ending search for the miracle weapon, CIA operatives searched here in the remote mountain areas of southern Mexico for what up to then had been considered a myth, magic mushrooms. They used this man, a part-time chemist with the CIA, to dupe this man, a vice president of a bank and an amateur mycologist or mushroom expert, to try to get to the magic mushrooms and turn them into a drug. But it would be the amateur, R. Gordon Wasson and his colleagues, who would win the race and develop the drug psilocybin from the magic mushrooms. We went into the Mazatec area, far from the highways, remote from Mexico City. There we found that rotten bagas, as it's called, bagasso, covered with mushrooms. These mushrooms I didn't know, didn't never, had never seen. They were the sacred mushrooms. Wasson would also discover and record the ancient mystical rites of the mushrooms from a local shaman or magical priestess, Maria Sabina. And we were seeing incredible sights. They would go slowly or they would go fast as I ordained. All your senses are rendered acute. We say that you see visions, you see hallucinations, but th that doesn't uh, begin to tell the story. The hallucinations are only part of it. You hear sounds, you smell things. The, uh, the, the night was thrilling. Word of Wasson's discovery reached the CIA quickly. Dr. James Moore, a University of Delaware chemist, secretly served the CIA preparing deadly chemicals on short notice. Moore was instructed to get close to Wasson and accompany him on another trip to Mexico to get the magic mushrooms. Internal documents show the CIA felt a drug derived from the mushrooms could remain an agency secret. What in the world were they looking for with the magic mushrooms? I think the best answer to that is that they were looking for fundamental information on compounds that were, would be capable of causing changes in, in behavior, changes in mental attitude. Did you ever consider what would have happened if any of these substances were given to, say, unwitting people? Oh, I don't remember having considered that specifically. I. What if you, I, I trust perhaps you've thought about it. Uh, well, I haven't worried about it. Uh, I, you, uh, your question again, what would I have thought had I known that uh, the- Any of these substances would be- Would have been given to- Unwitting persons. Uh, you mean a, a hostile agent in an, uh, of another government? No, well, I, I mean- That was probably I mean one of the things I had in I mind. mean testing it out on an American citizen. I I guess I must seem very, very cold-blooded about this, but I don't recall ever having been very much preoccupied with that, uh, with that issue. But many drugs were tested in this way. A decision was made at the highest levels of the CIA to do testing on unwitting Americans. As one CIA document says, such testing would be operationally realistic. A former CIA official who worked on these programs describes for the first time how the decision was made. He did not wish to be filmed or recorded. Thus his remarks are read by someone else. I think every last one of us felt sorry to attempt this kind of thing. We knew we were crossing the line. Every decent kid knows he shouldn't steal, but he does it sometimes. We knew damn well we didn't want anyone else to know what we were doing. The decision was made to do testing on unwitting victims. It was decided they should be on the fringes of society because they were most vulnerable. It was the borderline underworld, prostitutes, drug addicts, and other small timers who would be powerless to seek any kind of revenge in case they found out. And as their predecessors had a decade earlier, the CIA turned to George White for help. White was now a high-ranking narcotics official. And by this time, the stories about George White were legendary. So the way this says, you know, may I help you, monsieur? And George White was busy talking with me. 
paid no attention to the waiter, so the waiter tapped him on the shoulder and says, uh, may I help you, uh, monsieur? George White turned around, whipped his gun out, and stuck it in the guy's face like this in this crowded restaurant. George White did not mind bending the law, and he knew the street well. He was the ideal choice for what the CIA had in mind. We were Ivy League, white, middle class. We were naive, totally naive about this, and he felt pretty expert. He knew the whores, the pimps, the people who brought in the drugs. White set up so-called safe houses for the CIA in New York, here in Greenwich Village. And later, in San Francisco, in this hotel, and in an apartment atop Telegraph Hill, with a commanding view of San Francisco Bay. While the existence of these safe houses was disclosed last year, details of what took place within them has not been told. A former CIA official who worked in the safe houses reveals that they were used not only for drug testing, but to study sexual behavior and how it could be used to manipulate people. We did quite a study of prostitutes and their behavior. How do you take a woman who is willing to use her body to get money out of a guy to get him to talk about things which are much more important, like state secrets? We learned a lot about human nature in the bedroom. We started to pick up knowledge that could be used in operations. There would be victims in all of this, but as the agency knew, they couldn't fight back. Some entries from George White's diaries. Clarice gets horrors. Janet, sky high. As one agency memo says, we have no answer to the moral question. The safe houses were not the only testing grounds. Millions of dollars would be spent on LSD research at universities throughout the country. And word would begin to spread on campus about this so-called mind-blowing drug. And suddenly, it was the counterculture of the 60s. I give the CIA a total credit for sponsoring and initiating the entire consciousness movement, counterculture events of the 1960s. Dr. Timothy Leary, the 1960s Johnny Appleseed of LSD. The CIA funded and supported and uh, encouraged hundreds of young psychiatrists to experiment with this drug. The fallout from that was that the young psychologists began taking it themselves, discovering that it was an intelligence-enhancing, consciousness-raising experience.